Coming up on today's wrestling news, an AEW star rejects a huge creative pitch. There's a massive Wembley match planned before MJF's return. Ooh, Brian Danielson files a major WWE trademark. And CM Punk reunites with AEW stars. I'm Adam Wilborn. I'm Michael Hamflit. And this is the news. Right, let's talk about this major AEW star who's re rejected a big creative pitch. Now, Sammy Guevara, if you are unaware, yeah. returned on a Ring of Honor taping on July 29th, saving Dustin Rhodes uh, from attack by the Dark Order. Now, this mm -hmm. obviously led some people to speculate whether or not they did plan a return for him on the main roster, but because of his previous issues with yeah. Mercedes Monet, uh, whether or not that had affected his mm. booking on AEW rather than Ring of Honor. But Brian Alvarez clarified this situation saying, uh, I know that everybody immediately jumped to the following conclusion that he was moved to Ring of Honor because Mercedes Monet is on the main AEW TV show. I was told that him being on Ring of Honor has absolutely nothing to do with Mercedes. I mentioned that to some people and they were like, there's no way, it has to be. All I can tell you is this, Sammy has been ready to go for a little while, which we've been talking about previously, of course. They did have a storyline for Sammy Gavar that would have brought him back to the main roster but there was an aspect of the storyline that he was not cool with it involved him turning heel he didn't want to turn heel whatever it was uh, they did have a story and they decided he doesn't want to do that aspect of the storyline so they ended up coming at the storyline where he's a baby face in Ring of Honor Though there were plans to bring him to the main roster yeah. uh, when Mercedes was there. It didn't happen, but uh, Alvarez continues, I'm sure he'll be back on the main roster. I bet you anything by the end of the year, he's back doing Dynamite and Collision. Uh, and friend of the channel, Ebu of Re Wrestle Purist, clarified at Backup Hangman on Twitter, of course. He didn't want to do it because he thought it was career stagnation. That was late 2023, apparently. He wants to be his own man and is very aware that he's in limbo, no man's land as the Jericho sidekick. So probably a little bit of something that we kind of speculated on in the past i.e. when we talked about Sammy Guevara coming back we yeah. said he has to be kept as far away as possible from Jericho just because yeah he needs to sort of re-establish himself on his own yeah. and if he just you know rejoined whatever Jericho stable is whether it's the Jericho Appreciation Society or the Learning Tree or whatever it's always one he yeah he would just sort of fall and back into it and yeah, I, I, I sort of get why he's doing this. It's sort of a step back for a step forward. I'm not saying Ring of Honor's, you know, a huge downgrade, but yeah. let's be honest, it does not get the viewership that AEW does. Um, but it's nice to clarify that it's not because of, like, internal politics in AEW. Yeah. Um, oh, it's, it doesn't feel like, does it, that we're making 2 plus 2... We're making 5 out of 2 plus 2. No, I don't think so. The specifics of what he wanted or didn't want from his heel turn. Yeah, the, the Chris Jericho is one aspect of it and that's part of this conversation. It could have been something else. Mm -hmm. He could have been asked to turn heel on a particular wrestler or with a particular character shift that he also wasn't a fan of and he's been able to say, no thanks, uh, I'd rather just do something else and as you say, like maybe take a step back, take a step forward. But... Like, he's been a heel for a, a lot of the time in AEW, hasn't he? And as a Jericho sidekick. Yeah. Like, I think that's it. The, those two things feel so tied together at this point. To the point where, like, the last time he was Jericho sidekick, he turned heel on Chris Jericho. Yes. To join the Callus family, if you remember, where God. they were nearly sidekicks within that. And that was sort of immediately flushed. And then he's mm. since, obviously, there was the, the Jeff Hardy stuff, which has taken him off TV. So maybe this... And he's had a kid. Indeed, yeah. Well, um, he hasn't, but, you know. So maybe he's returned. Oh, so right, it's just getting time off work. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like, the the Jericho element of this is interesting mm. because this would be his, like, fourth go around the horn as a Jericho stable yeah. member and kind of fifth, sixth in terms of stories that have been attached to Chris Jericho. So if it is that, you can sort of understand where it's coming from. There was um, reports a little while ago that we, uh, as I said, we reported, we aggregated shamelessly on this video <laughs> about um, the, uh, there was some like interesting, and I can't remember the exact words, but it might have been ambitious, or like just some yes. unique plans, I think it was for Sammy Guevara, and maybe that was tied again to the learning tree or something that has at least been parked for the time mm -hmm. being. But it'll be interesting to track now if this wasn't plan A, uh, how this plan B goes. How I want to see him as a baby face as well. I wouldn't mind it. And I think the um, the sort of the lower uh, lower pressure role, is that patronising? The lower pressure spot as a baby face on Ring of Honor. It's good, yeah, it's a good place to try stuff out, I suppose. Yeah, I think that's it. Like We can see maybe what stuff that wouldn't have been experimented with on Dynamite or Collision because it simply isn't a TV time to, yeah. to waste or throw around. But There's we'll a see. lot of heels on AW right now. Yeah. You might argue, well, I'm kind of going to get lost in the shuffle. You've got Jack Perry doing great work, of course, mm -hmm. as part of this elite storyline. Yeah. Um, and we mentioned the, the, the learning tree and people like that. So... Yeah, in, in, keep an eye out. For, I'm just glad he's back wrestling again, to be honest. Well, yeah, we'll see what kind of year he has from here. You mentioned big heels in AEW. Mm -hmm. You'll disagree with my sentiment on this, but of course, MJF currently one of the biggest on-screen heels, at least within <laughs> AEW. Uh, got a massive match coming up uh, against Will Ospreay at All In. 
And, uh, you know, I don't think it was necessarily people's first uh, thought of maybe what would be the match for either man at mm -hmm. that show. But per Fight for Select, this has been on the docket for quite a while. Yeah. So much so, it was planned before MJF even returned to television. Wow. When he made that surprise comeback and just drilled Adam Cole and, well, seemed to kick that storyline into touch back. Uh, and that's dealt with. At double or nothing, yeah. Um, so obviously, yeah, MJF won the, uh, the international title, renamed it the American title as part of this feud against Will Ospreay and doubling down on how much he loves America ahead of working an enormous show in England. Um, he's going to take the title to Mexico as well. Oh my God, what is that going to look like? Um, but yeah, Fight for Select reported that um, Obviously, having Osprey put over Swerve Strickland was part of a, you know, a project to maintain Swerve Strickland's place as the number one guy. Within. We reported that at the time, and people definitely didn't overreact to the way we reported it. Everybody was definitely, definitely fine with how we talked about that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so the report does say from Fight for Select, um, we, as in Fight for Select, aren't sure of the full one-hour match was planned along the way. As we're told, there was some discussion as well not to do it in the weeks leading up to the, the Wembley match. However, long before it, MJF's AW return, there were creative plans for Osprey and MJF to carry a feud throughout the summer, or summer all the way to All In. Those we've spoken to believe the American Championship was a temporary move to get more heat on MJF ahead of All In at Wembley. <laughs> We're told that a goal for the International Championship is to continue to elevate it. So, um, hello, Fraser. Um, <laughs> if Osprey wins the title back, presumably he'll. But he won't. But well, yeah. indeed. He'll presumably re rebrand it as the International title, maybe the British, who knows, but. Uh, that American title feels like it's here for a good time, not a long time. Yes, I think you're right. As, but, as beautiful as it looks. Yeah. Oh, it's a gorgeous looking belt uh, in all its hideousness. Yeah. But as we talk about <laughs> Sammy Guevara's plan B, this apparently was the plan A. It's mad that, isn't it? Because I think when, when once Will Ospreay sort of established himself as a regular on AEW, I think you and I would have put better houses <clears> on it being like, okay, well, all in, Swerve champion, let's do Ospreay versus yeah. Swerve, um, even though, you know, Swerve was... On, his, on the road to being a baby face, mm. previously threatening to attack children, <laughs> but now he's a baby face, obviously beloved by everyone, he's brilliant. Um, but no, they've uh, clearly had different plans for Swerve in this MJF Osprey thing. I think if you'd have asked me beforehand, would you like to see, well, it depends how you word it, I suppose. If, you, if they said, do you think they should do a Will Osprey versus MJF match before doing that match at Wembley? I'd be like, don't do that, you'll ruin the, the you know, uniqueness yeah. of it. But. Oh my god, after that one hour match, I'm on the hook for, for when. And it's the MJF pattern, right? Punk, yeah. Punk yeah. Call. yeah. Huge pay per view matches typically follow the TV match, where it's not about the first time, it's about what they've put in that match to then use again on TV. Um, and they play the long game with Will Ospreay here because there will be other big occasions when yes. they win this title, and presumably, you know, if AEW want to run Wembley again, or indeed, Do it, UK, please. Uh, Ospreay will be great for them. But, you know, like, we can't look too far in the future when there's one so close on the horizon. Mm. I, for one, cannot wait for all, and I'm going to be travelling down to London. My day is going to go exactly like this. Let me give you okay, go on, a then. short form. I'm going to arrive probably at Wembley Stadium 5 to 3. Uh, I'm going to join an enormous queue. I'm going to get stuck in the boiling hot sun, hopefully, of London that day. Oh, please. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get any merchandise. I'm not going to be able to get any drinks. I'm just going to be harried into the building just in time for the first bell. Then when the show finishes, I'm going to be harried out of the building, rejoin that enormous queue, mm -hmm. not get any drinks, not have a chance to sort of relax, talk about the show. No, just feel mega stressed and get back on the tube and try and get out of there. That's going to be my entire day. Because right. I can't think of a better one. Well, I disagree with you, aside from the not being able to get any merch thing. I disagree with you on pretty much everything there because right. me, and, me and MJF were actually chatting last night because obviously, as you know, we're best friends. Uh, right. Uh, and I was telling him, uh, Max, you know, if you get in there a little bit early to warm up or whatever, uh, why not come to our live show, what? which is going down at midday on the day of All In? <clears> and he's like, well, I'm, I'm probably going to need to be around the venue, mate. And I was like, I'm, trust me, mate, because we're best mates. I was like, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Right. I said, well, don't worry, mate. It's only minutes away. It's the Crystal Club is literally right around the corner from Wembo. Oh. He said, might see there. He said, might. Uh, can't subject <laughs> change. He's definitely not going to be there, but we will be there. Whatculture.com forward slash tickets. We're going to do a show. We're going to do a big meeting and greet and then we go we got ourselves a cowboy all the way over to Wembley two and minutes then, yeah yeah right literally right over there and then uh, I said uh, Max what are you doing afterwards uh, and he said probably, probably celebrating my title when I said no doubt uh, <laughs> so if you want to do that you want to come to Sweet Chin Music at uh, well, where was it oh yeah the exact same venue that we're going to be at in the morning Sweet Chin Disco at Crystal Club immediately after all in well not immediately after go and do uh, what went down and ups and downs that's, that's, what, he, that's what he said to me so right. yeah uh, and then head over to Crystal Club for Sweet Chin Disco and he said I'm just worried there's going to be no Maxes there I was like that's where you're wrong mate because my cast is going to be there Prince Nana is going to be there and for some reason I'm hosting it search Sweet Chin Disco whatculture.com forward slash tickets for our live show well that's totally turned my idea around but I couldn't be more excited well you're probably thinking now if, you, if you're like if you've got tickets already and they're selling out so make sure you get them whatculture.com forward slash tickets 
topic is, you're probably thinking, yes, yes, yes. Well, don't do that because Brian Daniels is going to sue your ass because <laughs> according to Wrestle Talk, he has filed a trademark. <laughs> For his old catchphrase from WWE, of course. So you just got to let us stop Paul White getting it. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, I mean yeah, Brian Jones is coming, coming here right, to kill people's asses. Huh? Huh? Uh, yeah, he's got a USPTO filing. Yes, yes, yes. Trademark registration is intended to cover the categories of entertainment, the nature of wrestling contest. Blah, 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 blah. He's filing the trademark for yes, hmm. uh, and it's going to be probably all over Wembo. He was extremely disciplined with this, Sinead. He was. Remember, he worked so hard to just hold back and to, you know, it's an awesome thing to do, but I understood when he arrived in AEW, the arms went up, but it wasn't with the fingers, and then I think the first time he unleashed it in the match, it was godly stuff, yeah. wasn't it? Oh my God, he's doing it, he's doing it. But that, yes, 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 of course, it's the famous T-shirt. Um, it was always the brand, WWE likes to brand things a certain way, and it was always the, the triplicate that seemed yes. to make it, and I guess. <laughs> yes, yes. So yeah, he's, uh, he's hopefully going to get that. Um, Christ, if he doesn't get it and then does it at Wembley anyway, between that and when Swerve first had the final countdown, it could be a very expensive night to oh be God. Brian Danielson, couldn't it? Yeah. Put those two things together. Don't you get your, get, get your checkbook out. Um, but I like, I quite like the idea of um, characters. We, we say this all the time. With How long has he been there now? Four years? Yeah, 2021. Uh, oh, no, yeah. three years, yeah. But still, yeah, he'll, uh, and he intends to be there longer, even if it's going to be in semi-retirement. He's August 1st, so tomorrow his contract officially ends, but it's Brian, he loves to lie, Cody taught him how. Uh, so we'll see how that all pans out. But yeah, I like the um, overlap of like wrestlers when they move from companies to companies, like getting to retain music, getting to retain yeah. certain colours, aesthetics, catchphrases. It went the more you can get, the better. I find because yeah. people when they think of the dream match, it, like WWE used to ruin it so much with like, oh, oh my god, that's Steve the Stinger Borden. It's like I don't, I don't want him. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't need random drummers at WrestleMania 31. I'll just take the crow. Thanks. Um, and speaking of AWWE overlaps. Ooh. We always love these, and uh, we will take any excuse to talk about the funk. Uh, what can I say? Man draws. Uh, and there was a picture that he dropped on Instagram yesterday as part of like a weekend photo dump he'd been at Comic-Con, where there was, of course, that, um, there was like panels for WWE, but there was a huge angle that broke out, which resulted in the booking of the yeah. Brit Baker Mercedes Manor match for Wembley. And uh, this allowed- Typically normal way of announcing it by Tony Khan, by the way. Oh yeah, <laughs> we got over the match. It's going to be Wembley. I love him. He's great. Um, but yes, as a result of this, we did see uh, the brilliant Denise Sassera did an interview with Punk where, like, and Dan Housen, where they were basically just hanging out all day together backstage. And this extended to Darby Allen uh, and Brody King, our fantastic editor Ryan, will hopefully be throwing the photo up now because it's certainly better to look at than my face. <laughs> Those three hanging out together, um, it's not. There's no kind of like, oh, was this taken last year? Darby's got the face tattoo. But uh, I think um, Brody King's in some gear that. Brody like, King's throwing Darby Allen at someone. He's in some, like, yeah, he's in some lush pink camo thing, and then I think Punk was wearing some pink camo shorts when he met Jesse Ventura, so they're probably like, oh, I don't want them, thanks very much. Ah. Just nice. Just nice. They were obviously big mates um, from AEW, and Punk has made no secret of just how much uh, he loved before he even arrived in AEW, Darby Allen, and that match for getting him back yeah. going, rolling back at all in. And Darby's talked of his appreciation of working with Punk in the yeah. past, of course. Is this a sign they're going to WWE? No. Um, but, uh, I mean, we might speculate on it uh, later on. Any Punk AEW wrestler thing always feels like not necessarily the rebuilding of a bridge, but just the putting out of the fire of the one he built. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this coming hot on the heels, of course, of uh, Drew McIntyre and Jack Perry becoming best mates. This is it. Like, everybody's just becoming friends. Thanks, Ian Punk. <laughs> Are we going to get a crossover between WWE and AW? Again, no. But just nice to see wrestlers hanging out together. Who would you like to see hanging yeah, out together? Yeah, that's a good point. If you had to go on a night out with one <gasps> yes. person, from, if you had to come to Sweet Chin Disco or the What Culture Live show with one person from WWE and one person from AW, you can have two because you can have the outrunners. Because please, God, please let them be around all in. I really want to interview them. Youngest man alive. Oh, I love them. I'll pay that thousand pounds for their seminar or whatever it is that they're doing. <laughs> uh, let us know in the comments, though, who you'd like to come to our live show with, and we'll try and make it happen. We can't, but we'll try and make it happen. Uh, and let us know your thoughts on all of today's news stories in the comment section below. And don't worry, we'll be back with another news later on today. For now, though, why not check out this video right here? Bye!